Well, welcome to Desert Springs for Easter. We hope you're doing well and continue to shelter during this time of COVID-19. We pray you and your loved ones are safe and healthy through this Easter time. And we're going to pray in a moment, asking God's protection and healing, and also pray for our nation. A few important announcements today. You can submit your prayer requests on the main page of our website at visitdsc.org. Look for the round prayer requests button. And I'll be praying for you for every request that's submitted and also passing your prayer requests onto our intercessory prayer team. And then we can thank God for Easter together. He is risen. Uh, kids ministry has kids worship time with Pastor Lorraine today. Just click on the round button on the main page of our website at visitdsc.org for kids worship time. And youth today are meeting with Pastor Colin on Easter at 11 a.m. on Zoom. Use passcode 805-704-5621. I'll say it again, 805-704-5621. Now, if you need assistance with the food pantry, food is available here at the church. Please call our church office and follow the instructions to express your food need for the pantry. We want to be there for you. And then National Day of Prayer is coming on the first Thursday of the month of May. That's Thursday, May 7. So mark your calendar for that day to pray for our nation. And if you can fast, fast that day for our nation on May 7th. We need revival. And we'll be having a wonderful online prayer service on May 7th. So be watching for it. And then we're so thankful to have our legacy campaign fulfilled with gifts and pledges now totaling over $805,000, our, our need. And already we've had over $300,000 uh, given in already to help pay that mortgage down. So thank you as we complete our pledges and gifts over this next two-year period to pay off of the church facility completely. And then I want to thank you, church family, for your generous giving to support this ministry in this unusual time. And you can give of your tithes and offerings online. We appreciate your gifts in this time of crisis. And just go to the main page of our website at visitdsc.org and scroll down to the tithes and offering large round button. Click that. You'll be able to give by credit card right online, or if you prefer to uh, give by check. Our mailing information is there when you click the round button for tithes and offerings, and you can mail your gift by check in. So thank you for doing that. Uh, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and the isolation, know that God is with you. We appreciate your support in the difficult time, and we want to support you. Thank you for coming to church online on this Easter Sunday. And we're here to celebrate the Lord together. So would you bow with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your care and your love for us. And on this Easter Sunday, in our hearts we are so grateful that you, Father, gave us your one and only Son. And that Jesus, you came to die for us and as is signified today that you rose from the dead to demonstrate that our sin is completely paid for and to have victory over sin, death, and hell. And so, Lord, for all of us who believe on you, we say thank you so much for Good Friday and for Easter morning. And so, Father, today as we celebrate we also ask your healing touch and your care upon everyone in the church family, upon all of our loved ones, family and friends. And Lord God, upon the United States and all of our friends in Canada, we pray for Canada today together and literally the nations of the world. Father, we would ask, would you please in your mercy and grace intervene and lift the virus, and lift this pandemic, and bring healing 
and wellness to our world. We pray today for each one who is facing illness, for each one with a family member or friend that they're concerned for. And Lord God, we ask your healing touch on each and every one. Lord, we pray for those facing financial lack, for those whose jobs are uncertain or have been lost. And Lord, we thank you that you are our supply. And so we ask for provision for each one. Give us peace, Lord, and help us to use this unusual and threatening time in a way that honors you to reach out to others who need your hope and, Lord, to put our trust soundly in you. God, we pray that this would be lifted soon. We pray for our leadership in our state of California and leadership in our nation. We pray for everyone in authority, for the president and the vice president, for the head of health for our nation and everyone involved. And God, we pray you would grant each one wisdom and guidance in what we should best do. We pray for a cure. We pray for vaccination. We pray for healing. And for times of refreshment that can only come from the Lord. And so on this Easter Sunday, we pray for new life. Even as you, Jesus, offer us new life through your own death and resurrection. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in advance. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, uh, we would like for you to do something uh, in the comfort of your own home. If you could just go ahead and stand, I'm going to say on the count of three, he is risen. And you're going to say, he is risen indeed. So here we go, church. One, two, three. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, let's go ahead and give it one more try. I know we could do it a little bit better, a little bit more with a little bit more enthusiasm. He is risen. He is risen indeed. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I could say it is well Jesus is overcome and the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise When He calls my name No more sorrow, no more pain I will rise on eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise. I will rise, yeah. There's a day that's drawing me. When this darkness breaks to light And the shadows disappear And my faith shall be my eyes Jesus is overcome And the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagles' wings before my God. 
and rise. I will rise. I hear the voice of many angels say, Worthy is the Lamb. I hear the cry of every longing heart. Worthy is the Lamb. I hear the voice of many angels sing. Worthy is the Lamb. I hear the cry of every longing heart. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. And I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise. On eagles' wings before my God fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. I will rise. I will rise. Hallelujah, we will rise. God sent his arms. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He let forget. He lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave. Is there to prove my Savior lives? Sing with this church. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because I know. worth the living just because he lived. How sweet to hold the newborn baby and feel the bride and joy he gave but greater still Come assurance This child can face Uncertain days Because he lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fears are gone because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living just because He lived And then one day I'll cross that river 
I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death give way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know my Savior lives. Stand and sing this because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fears are gone because I know. Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, oh, because he lives, all fears are gone, because I know he holds my future. Life is where the living just because he lives. And life is where the living just because he lives. And life is where the living just because he lives. Happy Easter. God bless you all. Well, good day and happy Easter to you. Easter raises a remarkable question, and it's the question of the empty tomb. And that's our topic on this Easter 2020, the question of the empty tomb. And in this unique time, you might have various questions right now. How much longer will we be isolated? Will our finances last? Will those we love be all right? And all of these critical questions are tied into the great question of Easter that we raise together today. For in the question of the empty tomb, we find the true answers to life and hope and help from our God who loves us and gave his own son to die for us. So hang on with me for the answers and be encouraged. There's hope, and there's hope available from heaven for you. Now, people sometimes ask me, Mark, what's your favorite book in the Bible? Well, we're in it today, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16, the first eight verses. If you have a Bible handy, you can open it up to Mark chapter 16. Or if you have an app on your phone or tablet, you can turn your Bible on. This is the historical account of what happened that first Easter morning. Now, already in Mark chapter 15, Jesus has died upon the cross. And he has been taken down, and he's been buried in a borrowed tomb. We read in the end of Mark chapter 15, Pilate wondered if Jesus was dead by this time, and summoning the centurion, he questioned him as to whether Jesus was already dead. And ascertaining this from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph, and Joseph bought a linen cloth, took Jesus down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were looking on to see where he was laid. Now, as we begin chapter 16 in our text today on Easter, it's the third day since Jesus has died and been buried in a borrowed tomb. Now, ever since Jesus was crucified, his followers I believe we're somewhere between the thoughts of 
oh no. And now what? Jesus, the miracle worker, Jesus, the healer, Jesus, the restorer, and he was gone. And you know, at times in our lives, our hopes get dashed. Our plans go sideways. We just aren't sure what to do. And we're in an international waiting game, so to speak, right now with very high stakes as we wait for viral infection to pass. Lord, may it be quickly. And we don't know exactly how long it's going to be or exactly who all will be affected. So it's very sobering. And in the same way, it was extremely sobering during this three-day period for the followers of Jesus after he died on the cross. Even as Jesus' disciples were waiting, so we're waiting right now. And in these very uncertain times, God speaks to us out of the book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10, and he says this to you today, be still and know that I am God. Do you receive that, believer, today? To be still and simply be confident in the God who loves you, the God over all creation, the God who is greater than anything we will ever face now or in our future. And so now we pick up the historical account of Jesus that first Easter morning in Mark 16, the first eight verses. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might come and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? To move it from the entrance of the tomb. Looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, as we think about the question of the empty tomb from that first Easter morning, I'd like for us to talk about the three big no's of Easter. The three big no's. Let's talk about them. First, no stone. No stone now covered the tomb. And the crucifixion of Christ is not the end of the story. For now on the third day, the stone was no longer necessary. It had been moved by the angel of God to show that he had risen. And so the prophecy made way back in Psalm chapter 16 has now been realized, quote, you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. The stone had been placed there to stop the smell and to entomb the dead body. And the women, of course, wondered how they would get in. You see, it was easy to roll the stone in place for one person. It was in a track moving downhill. But once in place, it was extremely large. And uh, they didn't know what they would do. All they knew is that they had to go to where the Lord was buried. And they had brought burial spices with them because Jesus had been buried in a very rushed manner before the Sabbath began. But you see, there was no more need to move the stone because the tomb was empty. And the angel greets them 
and he explains what's up, and then he tries to calm his guests. Sometimes what we worry about has already been taken care of by God. Are you listening to me this morning? Sometimes what we worry about has already been taken care of by our God. The stone would have stopped their entire mission, but it was already gone. You know, we can sit and worry about the obstacles of life, or we can just go to God, who will move those obstacles for us. And then that leads us to the second big no of the first Easter morning. Not only was there no stone, there was no Jesus. No Jesus. And after all, he had spoken about this in advance, long before he died. In fact, his speaking about this is described in all four of the gospel accounts, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, Jesus said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And then Jesus said of himself in Matthew chapter 20, verse 19, They will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him, and on the third day he will be raised up. And then in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 9, Jesus gave them orders not to relate what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. And they seized upon that statement, discussing with one another, there in verse 10, what rising from the dead meant. And then again in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 28, But after I have been raised, Jesus said, I will go ahead of you, to Galilee. And then again, Jesus said of himself in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 33, after they have scourged him, they will kill him, and the third day he will rise again. And then finally, in John chapter 2, Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And of course, he was speaking of his own body being put to death, but uh, death would not have victory over his being killed. So, why were they so surprised that Jesus was no longer there in the tomb? I mean, after all, this is exactly what he had been saying. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in the problem that we forget God has the solution, that God can handle it. God can handle your health, believer. He can protect it. And God can handle your finances. He can restore it. And God can handle your concerns. He can take it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ever ask or imagine, according to his mighty power, which is at work within us, Ephesians 3, verse 20. You see, when you add it up, no stone and no Jesus means, thirdly, no way. No way. And yet the Bible accounts that he was gone and that he would appear numerous times in as many ways as could be imagined to a few or to as many as 500 at once as described in the book of Acts chapter 1 and again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Eleven different appearances of Christ are described in the Bible after the empty tomb. And yet there would still be those who would not believe in the rising again from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 20, we read of one of the disciples doubting that Jesus was alive again. We call him these days Doubting Thomas. And so if anyone calls you a Doubting Thomas, it means they're saying you don't have enough faith. You don't have enough faith in God, enough faith in the Lord. Listen to verses 24 to 29 of John 20. It says, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger in the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger, see my hands, and reach here your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. And so the great question of the empty tomb begs for our personal answer for each and every person on planet Earth through all creation. Do you believe in Jesus, the Son of of the living God, who is alive again, ascended to heaven and sitting at the right hand of God the Father, waiting to return someday very soon. It's the question that makes all the difference in the world, not just for this life, but for all of eternity. You know, there really are only two options. Either Jesus rose or he didn't. Your answer to that question is eternally significant because the same loving God who raised his only son from the dead is ready to raise you to new life. We read in Luke chapter 1, nothing shall be impossible with God. Jesus' resurrection surprises and confuses, even as the women who were there at the tomb that first Easter morning. His resurrection makes us wonder and, and ask, was it a fake, perhaps a mistake? Or is Jesus all that he claims to be, the very son of the living God? The Bible tells us that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins so we could be forgiven. And his rising from the dead shows that the price of our sin has been fully paid so that we can have eternal life too. And so my question is, on this Easter, how do you respond to the empty tomb? For all the no's lead to one gigantic yes. He is risen. Nails in his 
his hands and through his feet but the end told much more than they expected for everyone knows three days he rose three days you and me So, Almighty God, we thank you for Easter, the eternal hope we desperately need to the core of our souls, the assurance that there can be life that is right with you, not only now, but forever in heaven. God, forgive us for our cynicism. God, forgive us for our doubts. God, forgive us for being so preoccupied with our own simple lives that we have failed to look to you. Lord Jesus, you are the risen King, our Savior and our God. For each and every one of us who has turned from our sins and come to you to believe. And so on this Easter, we say thank you. You've risen. And Lord, we thank you. You're coming again soon. And Lord, in this time of life crisis here on planet Earth, we thank you for how it points us closer to you. Oh God, forgive us and help us to look to you in this our time of need. And Lord, your rising from the dead makes clear that we have an eternal time of need that only you can help with. And Lord Jesus, how we thank you that you're ready to rescue us, to forgive us of our sins, and to give us a new life with God forever in heaven. And so if you're listening right now and viewing right now, and you're not sure that you've ever invited Jesus to come into your life, you can do it on this Easter. The Bible says that for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And you say, well, Mark, what would I have to do? You have to say, Lord, I'm willing to turn from my sins to give my life to you. Come into my life. Forgive me of everything. And then God will come into your life through his Holy Spirit, forgive you, 
and give you a new life for the Lord. And God will help you to live for him, and he'll forgive you when you don't. And so we can't earn heaven, we can't earn God's forgiveness. The Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And Jesus, God's son, died in our place and rose again so we can be forgiven and sure of heaven. So if you need the Lord right now, or maybe if you're just not sure where you stand with God, talk to the Lord right now and settle it. Pray and say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I believe you're God's only son that you died for my sins on the cross and that you rose from the dead so I can live with you forever in heaven. Thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me of everything and come into my life right now. I'm willing to give up my old ways to live for you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you on this Easter 2020. If you pray to accept the Lord in your life or to recommit your life to the Lord, write to me here at Desert Springs Church. And our mailing address is right on the main page of our website at visitdsc.org. I have a booklet I've written to help you in living for the Lord, and we'll just send that to you free. So write to us and let us know. And then share this video cast with others so that they can come on this Easter and uh, watch this service as well. And now if you please just stand wherever you are, we'd like to close with a final blessing from the Lord for you. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine on you. May God be generous to you and give you his peace. May God protect your welfare and may God bless your life for him. Use you for his glory and give you a confidence that Jesus has risen again. Amen. God bless you, and see you next Sunday.